It's a blessing. We'll come on a three-star prospect and the newest member of Tennessee, Quinn Jabunji. How you doing, man? Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good. Well, obviously, it's a big decision you just made. You're heading out to Tennessee now. Walk us through this and how are you feeling right now? I'm just really excited about it. Mm -hmm. This has been kind of a long process, as we know. And I guess that you're now a member of Tennessee, but how does this come to be? Like, how did Tennessee win you over? How did Rick Barnes win you over? I uh, just, uh, I know it's a big opportunity. Uh, I'm working on it since like two years because I was in France two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I can mm -hmm. her for being ready, uh, get the American culture and everything. So now I'm just ready for it. I want to go back a little bit. We'll talk about Tennessee a little bit more in the end, but let's kind of go through this whole process because you're obviously not from America. You're from France. So what was like, yeah. what, what was it like growing up out there? Uh, it's like European basketball, so it's like more smart basketball. Mm -hmm. So I just like to come here, like um, just forget the American cultures, the American basketball, and everything. So now, growing up there, like you said, I mean, basketball is getting more and more well known over in Europe. It's still not the dominant sport anywhere close to soccer, but it's still a well known sport. How have you seen it grow though, from the time when you first started playing? How much has basketball already grown in the past five or ten years? Hmm. I think uh, mostly in France, uh, since the uh, French national team beat America like uh, two years ago, I think so. Uh, basketball getting really popular in France. So just everybody from is starting to play basketball. So that's really cool. How did the basketball first get put in your hands? Was it someone that kind of brought, introduced it to you? Did you just find it? Like, how did you first start playing this game? No, I was just eight years old. And I just watched uh, the movie Space Jam with Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> are you excited for the new space jam then yeah i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> so were you the first person in your family to play basketball or were there other people in your family playing it before no i'm the first one my father was playing soccer no i know you guys obviously have a club system out there you can kind of start playing it's a lot different than america the way we played over here but well, how did you first get introduced to like, playing the club system uh it's really really different like um uh... We start to getting popular when we come on in some kind of formation center. Like we belong to a professional team and we got like U21 team and U18 team. Mm -hmm. That's like a different process. And like I guess in America, we, people who typically go out there and play AAU and different stuff like that. But you guys out yeah. there, it's how like that club system where it's a lot different because it's not aff affiliated with your school. It's a whole different system. What's yeah, the exactly. difference like that? Like how did you grow up and get used to that? Um... I mean, uh, the only goal when we come out in some in the formation center is to to play with the professional team. Because if you start to play with the professional team, everything will, will start for you. Now I do know there's a lot of guys like you said. It's growing basketball. So it's a lot of talent right now from France. There's some guys in America right now, but you got like a guy like Matu Guzan. You got a few different guys out there. That's pretty big players from that area. Who are some of the guys that you've talked to that you've become pretty close with from the France area? Uh, from France area, I'm close to Yves Pons, who was in Tennessee. Uh, that's all I know because I'm not really... Uh, also, Daniel Bacho, he's playing in Arizona right now. And, and that's it in the United States. So what led you to come to America? I know obviously some guys could take the pro route of playing either getting some money over them, playing professionally for money, or even just playing at another level and then coming over to the NBA eventually. What led you to want to come to Mount Bird for a year then and ultimately go to college? Uh, it's like a dream since I'm young because, like, like I said, I, I watch Space Jam, so mm -hmm. I always want to go in, in America and in high school and everything. So it's just like a dream to, go, to be here. So did you ever consider staying in Europe or were you always just saying you want to come to America when you're able to? No, I want to come to America when I was able to. Mm -hmm. You already kind of discussed the culture differences because obviously it's a whole, two different continents, but... What was the difference, like some of the biggest things that you had to adjust to from America, from Europe, what were some of the biggest differences for you? Uh, it's more about language. I think mm -hmm. that's really more about language because, and also about the basketball, because in Europe, the basketball is like uh, smart basketball, like slow basketball, and here it's like really, really fast. We walk on the transition and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's just about it. You speak pretty good English already, but... Was that hard for you? Did you already have some English from Europe or did you kind of have to learn it all when it came to America? Uh, in France, nobody speaks uh, English, so it's pretty mm -hmm. hard. Uh, like when I came here in August, 
that was pretty hard, but now I'm feeling more comfortable, so it's all right. So you're already this fluent in English just after only being here for like six, seven months now? Uh, yeah, I'm feeling more comfortable. I can sound bilingual now, so. <laughs> <laughs> it can be hard, though, too. I was moving away from family and kind of coming on your own to America. Was that challenging for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I used to be far from my family because I was in formation center. It was like at five hours from my family. Mm-hmm. So it's like a process. I used to, to be far from my family. As I mentioned, that, that French national team is looking special right now just for the Olympic team eventually. But this young group, the guys are probably 21 under. There's a lot of talent from France. How mm-hmm. bright is the future, though? When you talk about yourself, you look at a guy like Musa Diabates out here. The list goes on, though. How special is the future of France basketball? Uh, cause we got a lot of talent like Kylian Hayes, Theo Malidon, who just went to the NBA. Uh, so we have a lot of talent. So we're going to see in five, five, ten years. How many guys do you think could be in the NBA in about five or ten years? Like you just said, Kylian Hayes been in this. Like, who, a couple of different guys have made the jump to the NBA. I think there's probably around like, what, 10 to 15 guys maybe from the NBA right now from France. But mm. another 10, 15 years, how many more guys can be in the league? Oh, uh, like 15 years ago? Uh, I think we only had uh, maybe Tony Parker mm-hmm. um, and Ricky Gobert. I'm not sure. Oh, Mikhail Jelaba too. Mm-hmm. But I got a lot. And now it's pretty cool to see a lot of French people who, who play in the NBA. So with the time you came to America, then you come to Montverde and you play on the post-grad team. Mm-hmm. How did you get used to that? Because obviously that's an elite program, a lot of top talents in that program. What was it like being a part of Montverde? Uh, it's still, uh, amazing. It's still a big opportunity to play against uh, the best high school in America, to play against one of the best uh, uh, guards in America, like Langston, Langston Love, mm-hmm. uh, Caleb Love and everything. So that's why it's pretty cool. When you first got out here, like you said, you're going up against guys like Langston Love, who's a five-star. Caleb Houston's mm-hmm. another five-star. A lot of different guys are within that program. What was it like going against him? Like, was it challenging for you at first or – what were some of those first days like out here in America? I mean, I used to be to practice as a professional team in France. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of American players in France who went to some college and everything. So it wasn't that bad. So I used to practice at the higher level. So mm-hmm. it, it wasn't that bad. So I was comfortable on the game. That is one of the cool things about playing overseas is that you do have that experience that play against guys that have played Division One, have gone and played pro. Like you get to play against some of the top players in Europe. How much do you see that kind of benefit you over your time there? I thought it was really positive for me to play against some professional player who went to some D1 school like um, Sean Armour. I don't know if you know. Mm-hmm. You guys, he went to some uh, D1, big, big D1, uh, D1 college. And just the fact to play against him, it's really positive because, like, I'll be ready for college after. Mm-hmm. This past year, the biggest thing about you is that you shot 42% from three, which is not an easy thing, and that's what really attracted a lot of colleges. How mm-hmm. do you become such an elite shooter? Well, I just walk out every day. That's what I do. Has it always been your case, or was it a certain point that you kind of remember saying, okay, now I'm an elite shooter. I feel like I'm really comfortable shooting the three. Um, I think... I started to being a shooter, like, since uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's not just you, though. You're also a versatile defender. You are kind of a point guard, shooting guard, small forward. Really, you can run whatever position you need to run at. How have you learned Mm -hmm. to become so versatile? Uh, It's just the fact that I'm shooting guard. But Mm -hmm. I used to play point guard when I was young. So I can play shooting guard and point guard. And now that I'm 6'6", I can also play um, shooting forward. When you're talking to Coach Barnes in this whole recruiting process, how does he plan to use you? Does he kind of plan to run you as a shooting guard? Does he want you to be able to run one to three? Like, how does he want to use you at Tennessee? Uh, I think he wants me to use uh, about defense first because I'm a Frenchman. I'm on ranking. Nobody knows me yet. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm not supposed to have a big role on this team. But from, from the first day of practice, I'm going to play by 100%. And we're going to see Let's jump into this whole process. So you're going through this then, and I read a little about your story. So you were kind of came over and you had to get some film out there about you. Right around December time, though, is when they made a mixtape for you. And then you had all the offers start coming. You had GW offer you. You had a few of the schools in the mix. 
But finally, when it came down to this, like who were the final schools in the running for you? Who were some of the other schools you're considering? Uh, I had Georgia, TCU, and George Washington and Tennessee. If you didn't go to Tennessee, who would have been your second option or if there was a second option? Um, that was really close with, between Georgia and George Washington. Mm-hmm. So what was it about Tennessee? How did they win you over? How did they separate themselves from the other schools? Because um, I know that in Tennessee, it's a big I major program, obviously. And there's a fact that if I, if I come in Tennessee, I'm about to play against some of the best players in NCAA. Mm-hmm. And also be, being coached by Coach Brown, who is a big, big opportunity. So I know I can get better every day in Tennessee. You mentioned someone earlier, and that's Eve Pons. He obviously has just had an incredible career out there at Tennessee. Now he's going to be drafted this upcoming year. How big of an impact was that for you? Being able to see that they have done someone like you in terms of someone else from France and made him successful, how appealing was that to you? Uh, the other fact to know is that a French player can come and run kid like me in Tennessee in a big program like that and being successful, that just makes me confident about it. Have you talked to Eve? Was he a part of this process? Did he kind of help talk to you about Tennessee? No, we all do have some call together, but we didn't talk about Tennessee yet. Only about French national team. Gotcha. So this whole recruiting process now is complete now. You're going to Tennessee, but you're not the only guy part of this process now. We know there's also a couple of the guys in this class. You have a five-star mm-hmm. in Kenny Chandler, a borderline five-star, a high four-star, in my opinion, and Jemai Meshack. Have you talked to any of those guys yet? And if not, though, just how excited are you to be able to go play with them? Uh, we didn't talk yet, but I'm really excited to play again then. Mm-hmm. So you're probably going to get out there around june time when they start the camps up. What do you want to go out there and improve on, though, before you get on campus? What else do you want to add to your game, improve your body? Like, what else do you want to get better at before you get on campus? Mm, I'm going to just work on everything, on my handle, on my shirt, uh, my defense, on everything, or being ready for play college. For Tennessee fans that don't exactly know what they're getting in you yet, Explain mm-hmm. your game. Like, explain everything that you'll bring to Tennessee. Uh, I'm a two-way player. Uh, I can play defense. I also I'm um, be ready in offense. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I play in transition too because I'm quick, so I can rebound and go and just score. Um, I can pass. I can shoot. So I, I can do kind of everything. When you look at this team next year, it's a lot of change of happening. A lot of guys have gone to the pros. They've lost a lot of seniors. It's going to be a whole new look team, only a couple of returns returning for next year. But how special can this team be? Like, what can Tennessee fans and the nation expect from Tennessee next year? I think they can expect some good energy in defense, mostly with the Jamai and me. But I know he's a good defensive too. So we're going to see. You got to talk to us about Coach Barnes. He's obviously one of the better coaches in all college basketball and incredible mm-hmm. coach. What's his personality like, though? Just talking to him on the phone. What's he like as a coach and what's he like off the court? Uh, he's like really cool. He makes some joke every time off the court. And uh, on the court, obviously, he's like really serious. And... Were you surprised by how funny he was? Yeah, I was surprised because <laughs> he was really cool and really comfortable with really. Hopefully now you guys have a full crowd out there next year. We know those pandemics nearing an end and hopefully you guys have full fans. But that first game, when you go out there, you put that jersey on, you see your last name and you step foot in front of that stadium. What's going to go through your mind? I'm going to just be really excited to, to start. And uh, like, that's it, I think. <laughs> no doubt, man. Well, a couple more things before I let you go. One of which is something I was like wrapping up with, and that's discussing your legacy because I know that all guys ultra want to remember for something. So when you are done playing this game, what do you want to be remembered for for to achieve both on and off the court? Uh, mostly about defense. And off the court, it's like, like uh, if Ponce is really popular in Tennessee because he was like, he's a French guy and he was really cool with everybody. So I won't be like him. And you discuss faith a little bit. Like, obviously, I know you're a believer. So kind of discuss God. How does he help get you to the point you're at today? Uh, I just pray every day, talk to him every day. So I'm just really happy to, to be in this position today. Absolutely, man. My final thing for you. Give Tennessee fans your three biggest goals you have set for your Tennessee career. Mm, I think I want to be one of the best uh, guard defenders in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, um, what else? Uh, one, of, one of the best guards in Tennessee, too. 
uh, one of the best two-way player. No doubt, man. Well, congratulations on the commitment once again. Appreciate taking time to come on today, and I look I forward to seeing what guy got next for you, man. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Anytime, man. Y'all welcome on, man. God bless. All right, see you.